you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. What is the long-term effect of too much information? Information, information, I just need some information. I've been dying, I've been dying, is it lack of education? I've been reading, I've been reading without any transformation. I'm addicted, I'm addicted, is it overstimulation? Hey. Welcome to the success report. The success report. This week, we have a special episode for you. Uh, over the weekend, uh, when I was popping into the TV room with my wife, she was watching the Golden Globes, I think, on and off, and I just happened to see um, Joaquin Phoenix winning uh, best, or I saw him kind of giving a speech. I didn't really notice for what at the moment. A little bit later, I realized he had won an, uh, an award for his role in Joker, uh, and I... Uh, previously, about a month or so ago, I think, maybe two months ago, uh, our boys at the After Watch had me on an episode uh, f- uh, for the, the Joker movie. Uh, so we thought, uh, in light of Joaquin Phoenix's big win um, and the epic hosting by Ricky Gervais of the Golden Globes, um, I know for me that's probably the thing I've seen the most headlines about uh, and, and if anyone follows me on Facebook, um, I shared a pretty good meme that basically said something to the effect of uh, Ricky Gervais didn't kill himself just like Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> so um, all that to say, uh, I've thoroughly uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the conversation uh, with the with the guys from the after watch. I think um, if you're. If you heard our uh, what we called the Six Watch episode where Darnell and I joined them for a Star Wars episode, uh, that one was a, definitely more of a blend between the two, two let's call it, uh, products or, or, or methods of uh, uh, the way we approach things uh, from a podcasting perspective. But this episode um, where we discussed uh, Joker... Uh, or the the movie The Joker and kind of some of the stuff surrounding it uh, was a little bit more in line with the way that the, these guys approach content. Um, so if you're interested in the Afterwatch, uh, I think this episode, although a little bit longer because they have you know three people instead of their normal two, uh, this episode I think will definitely give you a good uh, insight into to what to expect from more of their content. So as Darnell and I usually shout them out, uh, definitely I would say check them out. You know. You don't have to necessarily listen to every episode. Um, I think they do a pretty good... Uh, if you look at their podcast feed, you'll see they do a pretty eclectic... Sometimes they're just talking about movie reviews, what they're expecting, um, and they they cover a pretty wide array of content. So um, my recommendation, Darnell's recommendation, is uh, check them out, especially if there's a movie you like. I think they can really uh, give you some more insights into to what to... Maybe how to think about that particular movie a little bit differently. Uh, enjoy the enjoy the episode, and if uh, you like what uh, what you're hearing, you know, feel free to maybe recommend something that uh, the maybe the Six Watch can uh, do another episode on. Welcome back. You're listening to the After Watch, that podcast where you talk about movies and TV shows. That full spoiler conversation you have after you watch something you love or hate. I'm Phil. I'm Lavar, and this is <laughs> Joel from the Success Report. Uh, he's graced us with his presence. Uh, so we may participate in discussing a highly controversial movie, uh, Joker. The Joker. The jo- Wait, no, no, Joker? just Joker. Just oh, Joker. Wow. Starring okay. Joaquin Phoenix. And Did you go role? see it? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, actually not talking about a definite Joker. It's just a general Joker. <laughs> uh, Joker, uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix, directed by Todd Phillips. Todd Phillips, known for the Hangover movies. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, did one, two, and three. Really? And Bradley yeah. Cooper actually co-produced the Joker as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, well. Uh, so, yeah, came out recently. A lot of controversy, a lot of noise. Before we get into the actual movie, what do you guys think about some of the controversy that occurred around the movie? Um, pretty much people being fearful that this was going to incite young white men to committing violence. Um, and the increased security surrounding. That's brief thoughts, if any. Yeah, well, I know, um, I guess some people brought up, like, like they talk with some of the victims from like the Aurora, Colorado shooting after Dark Knight. Yeah, right. So, um, in terms of of them having those concerns and stuff like that, 
I think it's probably fully warranted because, you know, they had, you know, they experienced tragedy in that way at a movie screening, you know? So if they're, okay, you know, if, if in hindsight, they're like, okay, well, we know this controversial character and this brought tragedy to us. If they're concerned about it, that, that makes, that makes sense that they're making that correlation and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I mean, to, to your point, like, you know, the, the people who have had a traumatic event, right. I mean, the, oh, like the, the criticism I would ri- present is the fact that it was a Batman movie was irrelevant. Right, right, right. Right. That, that tragedy mm-hmm. just happened to be in a Batman film. Right. Right. Cause, um, cause it was, it was a premiere uh, opening weekend. Right. But it was just like the serial killer picked or the killer picked that theater because a lot of people would be there and steal. Yeah. So it wasn't the closest theater to his house. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the easiest theater to get to, but it was the only gun free theater. Mm-hmm. Not to bring six sense report topics to yeah, yeah, after watch, right. yeah, but, yeah. but you know, my point though is really that he picked that theater that maybe it was, yeah. Okay. What's the biggest movie coming out? Oh, I want to go get a full theater. Right. So right. yeah, it was a premiere weekend. What's premiering this weekend? Oh, Batman. Okay. That's the right, movie. I'm right, right. So, but it had nothing to do with the content of the movie. Yeah. And so in that sense, I see the like the criticisms or the concerns being like, well, there's yeah, the tie is Batman, but the original event wasn't tied to Batman other than coincidence. So I would I would I would agree in 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 this aspect in terms of I understand the association with a movie theater and fear of danger at a movie theater. Fine. Yeah. But if you haven't seen the con- seen the movie, right, you don't really know what the movie is about. All you know is Joker stars in it, and we know Joker is a psychotic person who kills people. The connection is loosely made, and if yeah. you really want to go and push it further, there's a lot of movies made with extreme violence, actually more violence than the movie Joker has. Right, mm-hmm. that same type of concern should yeah. be shared. Right, more make- evenly amongst those movies. Rambo came out two weeks ago, two weeks before Joker. Yeah, right. I don't think that was necessarily a peaceful movie. Yeah. Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. Mm-hmm. Did people die in Hobbs and Shaw? No, uh, I mean, people got punched I, in the I face. I pretty much assume people are dying in <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw. People you know, got hurt, it, but you know, but you no. Know, but the point is simply there. There's like, way more gunfire. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's no. That's a good point. Yes, a lot more, <laughs> a lot more fire. missing so bo- people with that so, gunfire. So well, I, I sympathize with individuals who went through something. They don't like violence. They don't like guns. So I I completely understand that. I respect them for that. But in terms of just saying this movie is going to incite violence for this particular group of people of yeah. society, I think that's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, I don't think that it's, that necessarily is is fair. I, I think in terms of some of the, the promotion around it, like if you watch the trailers, it's like clearly you see like, oh, somebody who's a disturbed individual who is going down a dark path and stuff like that, right? I, like, I get that, yeah. Yeah, it's so like I can understand people's concerns. You're right. I don't think you can necessarily say, okay, well, these sort of people are going to instantaneously gravitate towards this character and do bad things you know i don't think a move like as much as i may love movies and may find inspiration from movies i i I hope that well well it may not be necessarily the case that they people derive their value from movies to go and you know do things that are are devious and wrong you know they they, well they shouldn't you know (laughs) they they shouldn't and um um but yeah, I hope that that's not necessarily like the case in in general, right? So, well, in terms of the Joker, which is a, a great family flick for all to watch, uh, what do you guys think? Oh boy, no, you didn't bring your children to the Joker. No. Oh, yeah. oh okay. All right. <laughs> they would have been more of a distraction than enter- than watching. <laughs> yeah, since actually, they're both under two. Actually, my pet peeve <laughs> are people who bring the little kids to movies. I went to a movie. I saw Us. In the theater, yeah, and someone brought like the newborn oh, to the theater. That's why they have these things called stars and strollers. Yeah, yeah stars and strollers. Yeah, I know you've never been there. Yeah, but it was, it was no, first of all, they the turn down the volume. The lights are brighter. It's made for like basically pe- people who she, can't go to the movie she, without their kids. She had to leave halfway, not not even halfway, like thirty minutes into the movie, she had to leave because the baby was making noise. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, consider other people in the room. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I, I, I mean, it sucks that she couldn't go see a movie. But I yeah. mean, by a big screen TV, 
I mean, you know, get some. You know what? It's, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's the like, joke. Uh, I take foot out of mouth. I'm just kidding. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I stand by it. It's annoying. No, yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, the Joker came out. Uh, just about Todd Phillips, I've restated, is a drama. Is rated R. Uh, obviously not for kids. About a man who is a struggling, a wannabe stand-up comedian who is taking care of his mother, who is a working clown, um, who has mental health issues, and who feels like he's invisible in the world. Uh, and feels like he has to kind of hide himself as well. Uh, sorry, hide his issues, rather, in order to fit in. That's the only... Like, there's one concept that I find, like, if you think about it, is kind of um, where I think people could be more so offended by, more so just the portrayal of mental health and... And danger, like that direct correlation and stuff like that. Like, I could see people being more offended that, like, like if you present like a negative view of just mental health issues, just in general. Well, outside of the the narrative of the story, we can talk about that. But like, when I thought about it, like when I sat back and uh, thought about these characters, like, wait, hold on a second. Are they just saying because he has this mental health issue, like he's definitely going to be this problem, or you know, or yeah, yeah. or is he making I would answer, I would answer say no, but continue. Yeah. But I think in how the movie's portrayed, even like if you think about Batman villains in general, you know, when they're captured, they're sent to Arkham Asylum and this, that, and the other. Yeah, that's a major flaw in the Batman story. So yeah, I agree. That, yeah. yeah that, <laughs> it's just that is something within the mythos of Batman in terms of the portrayal of mental health. I, I get the concern, but I, I disagree in terms of the concept of the story because of, I, it, I think it's revealed that his issue is that he feels ignored. Yes. And the story, yeah compounds that when we start looking at um thomas wayne and the reaction of people towards thomas Wayne when he makes his comments about uh, the uh, citizens of gotham being clowns as it right. were yeah. so he's not in a way he's not um seeing the individuals of right. of of gotham he's seeing a group of people a certain class of people as being a certain way who takes out their frustrations because of their situation in life on people who are better off. Yeah, you know what's funny? It reminds me of like Grapes of Wrath mm. in a sense, right? Where it talks about like the, the depression and, and how like American society eventually goes into the depression and how it kind of makes society just worse <laughs> in general because of like how desperate everybody kind of gets. Yeah. That it just reminded me like going through this movie and seeing how people are kind of taking up, um, you know, the, the Joker's kind of cause of just like, um, expressing extreme dissatisfaction with society in, in general, you know, and want to turn over the apple cart a little bit, right? So it's just found it interesting in, in that way, just that relation between they kind of try to uh, allude to it like haves and have nots and stuff like that, yeah. you know, and, and kind of point that out a little bit. So I found that kind of interesting. I just instantly thought about Grapes of Wrath, like yeah. instantaneously when I was watching this and seeing how people how the society in general, especially towards the end of the movie, how society or people start rebelling like crazy, you know? So Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like in light of Batman universe. Yeah. Right? And Gotham and the backstory mm-hmm. of like how does Batman come about, right? There's right. like you know, I think the predicament with regards to the whole mental health stuff and yeah. all the you know, the societal issues is like it doesn't look like a fictional world in right, the movie. Right, right, right. But, right. <laughs> but like, I mean, you know, I, I'll, I'm sure most people won't say this, but I really enjoyed the Gotham series. Oh, oh, wow. I actually, <laughs> like, oh, but, wow. I, but I liked it because okay. of the backstory that was being told. Oh, okay. okay. Right, like, right, right. Right, like, yeah. I mean, to some extent, it's an aspect of the story that hasn't been explored. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And right, so right. I was, I was like, I was loving, like, Oh, you're saying that's why he became like this, or right. you know, and the, the, the various twists and like little things that happen, yeah. right? Whether it's Joker or whatnot, right. and so I, I mean, the series just ended for me. Like I just finished the last season, mm-hmm. probably a, two months ago, a month yeah, ago, right? And I mean, I know it finished a little bit while before, but um, you know, I'm going into it kind of like, okay, where do I tie it into the prequel timeline? Yeah. So in that light. You know, I'm watching it not with the same level of like. Yeah. I already know Gotham is screwed up, right, right? Right, and so to some extent, they're portraying how it's getting screwed up. Right, what is exactly. the tension yeah. that already existed? I yeah. mean, 
And I think that's a good point to make, like just the tension that's already kind of seething there and, and kind of like, um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character, like, you know, he becomes the Joker, right? Like him kind of being like a catalyst to, you know, like for that venting of that tension that's just there, you know, yep. that's just permeating, you know, the society in general. There's, there's three things, something that you mentioned that just came to mind. That it's not just a, an origin story about the Joker. It's an origin story for the Gotham that we know. Yes, right, right, Something right. That, that's actually a very good point. I didn't think about it that way before. That's actually interesting. And how the movie starts, like you said, it, it starts off pregnant. Yeah. It starts off gloomy and dreary and and kind of funky. And you know something is about to break. It reminds me of um, The Dark Knight Returns, the graphic novel that came out in the 80s written yeah. by Mark... Uh, Frank Miller, yeah, and it's it's known for making um, for being dark and gloomy. And when I was watching the movie, I, re- I was thinking of The Dark Knight Returns because it starts off the same similar way. It's a retired Bruce Wayne, a retired Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne, who's in a race car and gets into a crash or whatever. But during out the comic book, the beginning of the comic book, it's always reporting on the weather, how the weather is gloomy, it's dark. A storm right. is coming, a storm is coming, a storm is coming, and when the storm finally breaks. That's when Batman comes out of retirement and starts beating people up again. And it's kind of similar to the movie here. It You see the, the, the situation and the environment is very pregnant with something. And then eventually when it breaks, you know, the Joker comes out almost in full, not in full glory, but he comes out and you start seeing the makings of, um, you know, Batman's greatest villain, uh, essentially. So I like, I liked the, the, the tone of the movie, how it starts and the pacing, and the tone of it, how it goes pretty, um, pretty consistently and it's it it does generate a feeling at least to me in the in the when i was watching it it generated a kind of a dark creepy feeling but on top of that i found myself because i was a little bit more excited to watch the movie than i should have i try not to be excited for movies i try to just kind of go in plain right i don't want to be disappointed again when i when i watched uh x-men origins wolverine <laughs> my expectations were way too high and I came in and I got knocked down hard. So I try to keep myself leveled, but I kept on waiting to see, okay, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Cause I wanted to see what, how this story is going to unfold. So I was kind of rushing, eager to see the end of it. But, um, yeah, I think the journey of just seeing him going from beginning to end, I think it was very, like you said, very interesting to see the backdrops of what makes a Joker a Joker. And there's rumors that this may not be the Joker. Maybe it's the guy who inspires the Joker. Uh, I don't know what you guys Similar think. to what happened in Gotham. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, right, right, right. Right. that's right. I haven't but, seen Gotham, but I've seen some parts and read some parts about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I do I do think that I, f- I found the movie very interesting in terms of as a, as a character development piece of just yeah. seeing. Yeah. It's like, I think we made reference before to, to Breaking Bad and stuff like that, like in, in an episode. Um, but uh, that downward spiral of a character and watching somebody start off but pretty much at a bad spot but actually evolve evolve but he he or actually devolve. he yeah he well, evolves thing? but then he um is he spiraling down or is he spiraling up he's spiraling down well maybe he's, he's, okay he's, what do you mean by spiraling up well that's the thing from that from the viewership you know moving from being kind of low class quote unquote to becoming a, a, a potential serial killer yeah that's that's that was spiral but in terms of the character himself He's not thinking that. Yeah, he he's, he thinks he's. he's a, oh, he. I, you're right. He thinks he's spiraling up. He thinks yeah. he's leveling up. Yeah. yeah. In terms of people start to notice me, I'm causing change, and yeah. and and it's working because it is working for him. He wanted yeah. to put a smile on people's faces as a comedian. That didn't work as a comedian, but it does in terms of you know becoming the Joker. Everyone's literally wearing a smile on their face. Mm-hmm. He wanted to be noticed. He's noticed. He wants to be part of society. Society is embrace literally embraces him now. Yeah. And so for him. Things are working out great. Yeah, yeah. Things are like really on the up and up. Yeah, he's in you know a mental institution. Fine, he's probably you know criminal number one, whatever. But he's yeah. he's enjoying himself, and he's embracing the aspects of himself that he he put away. His laugh, for instance, was supposed to be caused on by a um, some sort of I can't remember what the, what the uh, term was, but some kind of some kind of illness he has. So he tried to hide it, explain it away. But by the end of the movie, he embraces it. No, this is part of who I am. So I think there's the aspect of the movie. There's a point of realization on on the character's part. Yes. Yes. There's a but there. Go ahead. But yeah, <laughs> but it is still a... Um, 
I guess this is my issue with any sort of movie that portrays the the bad guy as the main character. Okay. I generally don't like those sorts of movies in general. Why is that? Because I I, 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 even in comics, even in, like I just don't generally like them unless they're pointing to a point of more so showing that this is not necessarily the way to go. Oh, you, I, I don't know if you could watch this movie and say, you know what, I want to do that too. I, I, I know, <laughs> I, I know that in terms of that, but there is a sort of. Um, in terms of his realization of who he is as a character, there is a sort of like kind of like glorification of that, you yeah. know, like that that sense of realization bringing freedom, you know. So he is, even though he is criminal number one, he is, you know, fully realized. So that is actually his like achievement. Well, I think to, to, you know, pick, to, to, to pick to, you off that, then I would yeah. say this. Yes, he comes to a realization of who, him, who, he, who he is, but at that point, he makes a decision. So you have two ways to go. Oh, this is what I am. I could deal with it in a more healthy way, or I could deal with it in an unhealthy way. He right. decides to deal with it in an unhealthy way. Right. But there's also the like series of events that just kind of transpire. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like him getting beaten up leads yeah, to someone else right. giving him a gun, which right. then leads to him getting fired because he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best scene, the best scene in the movie is actually when he's doing the the happy dance like in the, in the hospital. In the hospital yeah. with the cancer kids and the gun falls out. Yeah. It was Man, stupid. everybody in the theater was like gasp at yeah. that moment. <laughs> well, I was like I also was like, what is he? Oh, this is kind of random. Like, where's this going? Yeah. Like yeah. until the gun falls out, I'm like how is this leading? The, where's this going? Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't know where the story was going. And then the gun falls out. You're like, oh. Yeah. Everyone collectively. That, that's such a great, like, collective movie experience where everyone's just like, oh. <laughs> everyone's just, like, stopped in their track. I thought that was, I thought that was pretty fun and, and great. Um, yeah. But in terms of uh, his realization as a character, like, I guess for me, like, I guess we'll talk about what we thought about the movie. In terms of, acting and in terms of like progression of a character development of a story i i like this movie i thought it was i thought it was good in terms of like the world that came out after this movie i was like yeah i don't know if i can actually get behind even maybe even some of the undertones of in terms of um not uh like that te- like the tension of society and like kind of like that bringing out a sort of um not appreciation for chaos, but just like saying like, this is what the Joker is about. Like him being about chaos versus Batman kind of being about like preserving order. That whole of portraying the chaos side of it didn't really work for me. In terms of it, it worked for the movie, but in terms of personal philosophy and stuff like that, that didn't work for me. No, I get you. That's fine. Yeah. Right. So. But I thought it was still a good, it was a good movie. I thought it was an awkward movie. Yeah. I, I right. watched it and I thought a lot of it was kind of just very awkward. Yeah. Um, him <laughs> dancing in his underwear, uh, him going to the fridge. Uh, yeah, that scene was so weird. Yeah, yeah. it came kind of nowhere. <laughs> like, and, and you see, you know what's happening because you're like, why? there's only one reason why he's doing all this stuff, like pulling all the trays yeah. out and like slowly. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's such a long scene in the sense of like, it takes him forever to pull everything out of yeah. the fridge so we can get in the fridge. But it's the thing, it didn't really go anywhere after that. <laughs> no. I thought he was going to try and kill himself or something or did he want to feel like he's in, he's, he's being, he's in Isolation. his mother's womb again. He's be like, is this, is this, it like, okay. I just took it like he was just like really like, like hot and he's just really hot. <laughs> and just, he's just really well, and I think bothered, and he just maybe to cool. Like you know, he like he's just so frustrated and stuff like that. It's just like that rage, and he just you know that frustration, yeah, and just the sensory thing of just like wanting to cool himself down. You know, that's how I read that scene. Okay. I, I just read it as like another example of his peculiarity and <laughs> crazy, like you know, mental instability that mm-hmm. just leads to decisions. You're like. Uh yeah. But, okay. Well, well, here's a funny wait, hold on. Would you say that he'd be he's portrayed more as mentally unstable or more so frustrated? Well, I was about to, was about to say that. Yeah. I think with this movie, you can relate to them in terms of just his his basic raw feelings. So right. it's, it's less about his mental illness. It, right. It's there, mind you. Yeah. But the isolation. Right. Um, trying to achieve something that you can't achieve. Um, not knowing who you really are because it turns out he's not who he really is in the movie. Um. 
in multiple uh, ways. In multiple, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so I think the, not being appreciated, being mocked, being laughed at, being isolated. And I think the movie kind of shows how society, in some part, plays a part in mm. in in the villains that crop up from all of, all of them, uh, okay. from from among them. You know, it's yeah. not it's not it's not always the case, mind you. But I'm saying in some situations, because certain individuals, I'm not I'm not even trying to blame society as a whole, but the people still have to make their individual decisions. But when you look at the chaos around him, surrounding him, and all the stuff that happens to him, one after the other, and we even see his shortcomings and his dumb mistakes as well, we do see a level of society maybe enabling him, not enabling him. I don't know somehow, in some way, incubating him mm. uh, to the point he comes to the, to what he is within the context of this movie. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I think mental illness is. Is there, but it doesn't. It's not really capitalized on as much. It's mentioned right. about twice, right. and we do see an example of him, and not even, not even this, but even in terms of just how we can relate to the character, how he lies to himself, like mm. putting himself, creating scenarios that don't exist when he has the girlfriend. And yeah. spoilers, going forward, um, the girlfriend is not his girlfriend. Yo, actually, and I, and I, sorry, you know when I picked up it wasn't his girlfriend. It was when he showed up at her door, um after meeting her only once and he started making out in the doorway that's the exact same scene I was like no sister would do that this, <laughs> no sister like no sister would do that I said it's not real that's not real no, don't, don't, I, don't, I, I don't believe this so if, if it was a, if it was a draw of not she, draw sorry a uh, flaw in a movie I would say they didn't convince me enough that <laughs> this was fake that's how that this was supposed to be real and only his mind you know what I'm saying they didn't convince me enough for that no, but, I, I, I was convinced no, no I was like, I, okay I was like I was like you know when 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 she's at the comedy show with him, right? right. Yeah, yeah, right. And like, you're like, is it really? Is he really funny? And she's and I'm reading her reactions yes. to be like, I yeah, guess, yeah, I guess yeah. He was funny. You know what? Here's the thing. I was going back and forth. Okay. Because yeah, at yeah. the door, I was like, ah, sorry, that's not real. Now the comedy club, like, hmm. yeah. maybe he thought th- that door scene was in his mind, but the comedy scene was real. And no, yeah, but real. see, the one thing was like. I thought there was enough of a build up yeah. mm-hmm. with regards to that scene that like he was also in an emotional state where like you know he just killed people right and he's coming home and like it didn't bother him uh, I'm screwed I'm just going after the girl yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and 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 it worked right yeah right yeah, so yeah. there was that aspect where I was like I was expecting her to like have a negative response right to exactly him. yeah um you know what's crazy though is like when when she's in his house, and, or house. sorry, when he's in her house, yeah, that was, and it. you're like, okay, like yeah. you start to, it, you're like, uh oh, like yeah, you yeah, realize yeah, yeah. it wasn't real, yeah, and this is bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, she's dead. Do, 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 you think do, she died? I don't, I don't, I would ask, I don't know. Yeah, hundred percent. You think hundred percent? Both her and her daughter? No, that's the daughter, not the daughter. What What's crazy is like, hmm. as soon as she did the. Yeah. Thing yeah. in the in the and then he did it back to her in the yeah. hallway. Yeah, that like was the, weird. And and she didn't have a weird response. I was like, oh, I was expecting her to be like, okay, right, right, like yeah. a, a, a negative response. You see, I I read that differently. maybe that wasn't even real. I read that differently. I thought her response to when he did the the finger tip the gun uh the gun fingers through his head. I thought her response was kind of um she was kind of taken back by it. So I I don't know if that whole interaction in the elevator is actually real. No, I thought that was no. Real. I, I yeah that I that, that I thought was real. real. I would say the you're you're right. The, the Her, hallway thing. I was expecting probably more that she would be like way more taken back. Okay, by it. right. Because it was so weird, like the way he like twisted his yeah, head yeah. and like and, hung and, his head there. And he's just still there and standing there. The dot da- the daughter can see it. Right. Whereas like when she did it to him, mm-hmm. the daughter was clueless. Right. Right. And so like. I was expecting her to be more like, okay, you're a weirdo. Right. Whereas like she, like you said, yeah. she was kind of, I would say she was taken back by like, okay, you're kind of funny, but you did it in front of my kid. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, I get you. Right. So, so the elevator scene was real in the hallway, probably real. Everything else. Fake. Fake. I think everything else was fake. Uh, and that's when I kind of felt bad. Is there a part in the movie where you felt bad for him? We felt sorry for him? You know, honestly, the funny, the funny thing, the funny thing with this movie I did not feel so sympathetic towards him throughout the whole movie. Is it because you know it's the Joker? No. Like, maybe, okay, the first time he gets beat up, 
Like yeah. When he gets stomped out, uh, he gets stomped out. Yeah, stomped out. When he gets stomped out the first time, when he gets smashed in the face. Yeah, I, that I felt. That I felt like a hint of remorse. That <laughs> I, I more so bad. when his boss told him to bring back the sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's when I felt bad for him. Like I was like, oh shoot, come on, man. Like okay, so when did the sympathy kind of dissipate? Like when did it disappear for him? I uh, I didn't really find him a sympathetic character. Yeah, I mean, I would say as I think I was too like analytical of oh, like okay. his character devolving into the Joker yeah, yeah. that I wasn't like sympathetic because I think what you, you started to make this comment and I wanted to generalize it where you were talking about, you know, society's impact. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, with people who are struggling, mm-hmm. like, Society does have a bigger impact, and we're ignorant to that a lot of the times. So. Okay. So, like, I, yeah, I appreciated yeah. where you were going with it, but I would say we can make it more general just yeah. to be like, we can play a role in people's lives yeah. way more than we kind of realize. You know yeah, what? Th- no, that's a, that's a great point because when he confronts Thomas Wayne, yeah, and you know, in this movie, Thomas Wayne's a jerk, but oh, yeah, full yeah, on, yeah, he's yeah, a yeah, jerk. Yeah, yeah. He could have played a more sympathetic role in his life. Mind you, it, context is yeah, context yeah. is a thing. But I'm, I'm, he's kind of an example of someone who can, you know, in general and towards how he portrays himself in the movie, Thomas Wayne, he could be a little bit more sympathetic to the plight of society. Right. He sees himself as the hero. He says, "Yo, I can save you. Make me mayor, and I will solve all your pathetic problems. You pathetic people." That's kind of Thomas Wayne's right attitude a little yeah. bit towards everybody. Which isn't that kind of, um. I don't want to say antithetical, but like not really reflective of the way we traditionally view um, like the Wayne family. Oh, Wayne. Oh, Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? He's, like it, it's actually not true to the story. Exactly. Thomas Wayne Pope, you're a very nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Like very kind of very. Uh, like um, wasn't it the orphanage and all that? St- like wasn't Ma- Wayne Manor like origi- like an or- wasn't there an orphanage aspect to it or something and then his like his son like Bruce or did Bruce I don't know I'm not sure about I'm that I'm like I don't know where I'm getting this like I I know this he he was a like a a physician who made a lot of money and he invested all that money back into Gotham and he was just very you know giving to give people chances and he volunteered his time and whatnot and so the Thomas Wayne we see here is like mm, this guy is not that nice he's yeah, not yeah. That, yeah, yeah he's yeah. not that cool guy I I liked and I didn't mind that like I don't mind like Certain change. Like Thomas, I'm not attached to Thomas Wayne anyway. I'm no, more no, attached no. to Bruce Wayne. Right, right. So Thomas Wayne could be a nice guy, he could be a jerk. I don't really care. Um, but I, it's interesting how he plays his role. I don't know if he was used, um, as a way to kind of speak towards the current political landscape. I kind of got that gist. Oh yeah. But yeah, if yeah. it was, I'm glad he didn't go all the way Wait, in on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It was, I've been turned off completely. But I think how they used them and. Uh, using within the context of the story, I think was well used, and he served. He served a purpose, of, served a purpose. of furthering Joker's He's, character development. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Because I don't know. I th- I think going back to the point where I didn't really find him that sympathetic of a character, I, and I think that actually is a strength of the movie. Actually, that they don't make him that sympathetic. It saves them. It it saves them from criticism. Yes, it does save yeah, them. Yeah. It saves it saves their butt. Yeah, you're not sympathizing with the serial killer. Exactly. Right, 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 right. It's good yeah. good plot line. You know? <laughs> so it, it is like very interesting just his character in general. And because I, I think just even his brooding in the midst of like this miserable circumstance that he's in, because I've you know, I guess we've all done some work with like the homeless and, and stuff like that. And and you see different attitudes in terms of how Yeah people deal with the worst time of their life you know and there's something like can deal with the worst time of your life like that can produce a bitterness and that's for sure and you see that very like in a very real way but you still see like another side where there's still like it's not like um like they're completely like they're not like human or anymore they still appreciate kindness and and stuff like that and, and and they think and even people at their worst are still trying to do the best that they can. You know, like you still see that, you know, versus other times people are just kind of reacting to the bad situations that they're going through. And it's just coming out a lot more in, in harshness and stuff like that. Well, that, right? that's, that's interesting because this character, he was trying to keep a smile on his face all the right. way through. And right. that's, I think it's admirable. Um, I think he's a little bit delusional in some of it, but mm-hmm. well, obviously delusional in some of it, but 
I think trying to stay above float, trying to keep a smile on his face, trying to be positive in things. And there's some aspects of him that's being real when we try, yeah. we're trying to convince his mother that all the letters she's writing to him isn't going to make a difference for them. Right. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, he was, you know, and I, I did feel, so what I try to do sometimes, I put myself in that character's shoes. And I mm-hmm. did. Here we go. And, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I feel bad for him, I think, when the comedy club, when... Why? He didn't know that it was bad. Well, I... I, I, I <laughs> like, it would have been... I, I would have felt bad for him if he got booed off the stage. Yeah, I, 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 the stage, I yeah. did, because at the beginning, when he was fumbling around, and it was awkward, and then afterwards, when he realized that wasn't real... And when we were playing the clip on the oh, night okay. show, yeah, yeah. Okay. they're like, oh. That, actually, that actually got me. I was like, oh, shoot. Like, and then, but it brings up an interesting point. So, um, Robert De Niro, who did a very good job, in my yeah, opinion. He's, yeah. He's he did great. a great job. Yeah. Like, what, three, four scenes, but did a great job. Um, it brought up a point about late, uh, um, late night TV shows, talk shows. Yeah. And I, and I, this, this bear with me. A few years ago at the Oscars, uh, Jimmy Kimmel brought in some people from the street. Not homeless people, but people who were like tourists. Sorry mm-hmm. to say that. Tourists <laughs> who were on the street. Um, they brought them into the Oscars during the Oscars live. They didn't know necessarily what was going on. And so he brought them in. It's probably the, the, the shtick he was doing. And, um, you know, they were taking pictures with celebrities and whatnot. And I felt kind of a ways about that. I felt kind of like they were being taken advantage of for, mm. for humor's sake. Right. You know, none of them were dressed. Everyone else is dressed up to the T. Everyone looks fantastic. They're coming in, their sweats and the t-shirts yeah, yeah. and whatever. And it doesn't matter how they're drawn, it's dressed necessarily, but in contrast, it looks kind of a way. So I feel like they're kind of being used for someone else's jokes. And so, um, I completely lost my spirit of thought. Uh, when, so we come back to the... he was brought on... Brought, on. Sorry, thank you. When he was brought on to the show, he, he says this, is that I'm just being used pretty much to be made fun of. It's not it's nothing legitimate here. It's not trying to help him out or anything. The, the Robert De Niro is just using him as part of the show's gimmick to make fun of somebody else. And I think, like, yeah, Late Night sometimes does that. Yeah. Like, comedy does that in general. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But not necessarily. Comedy is more transparent. Exactly. It's not under right. a guise of, of trying to be your friend or trying to help you out. It's, it's, they're coming at you. Uh, right. The stand up comedians are coming at you versus certain, certain late night shows where it's kind of using you and you're not necessarily knowing that you're being used. So I, I thought about that when I was watching that, that whole sequence. Like, oh, that's, it's, it's, I like this movie for the fact that A, it makes me think and B, I can find real world connections. I find connections from here to this, to this, to this outside of the movie. Right. It's, and I think that's maybe it's the hallmark of it being a very good, well-grounded movie. Taking yeah. someone like a Joker. And mind you, Christopher Nolan's Batman was pretty grounded. Yeah. But this is like a lot more grounded. I think it's set in the 80s as well, I believe, yeah. as well. well yeah. yeah. It's, it's, so it's, 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 I think you're going to say something. Sorry. No, no. I was oh. like, I'm totally like, you, I remember like, Instantly trying to oh yeah the era is different like instantly yes, catching right, that yeah. right like oh wait and and him like it it plays into him being able to smoke everywhere which is part yeah. of his character yeah. and it's not like which which I thought was valuable because it is part of I don't know why I was like oh that seems like it's part of his character yeah but like in some of the newer like in Gotham yeah Joker doesn't smoke yeah at all yeah, yeah. but. Like for whatever reason, I was like, "Oh, this actually fits his character." That the way that I remember it, you know, nostalgia. Yeah. And but because of the era it was set in, he was able to smoke wherever he was. Yeah, right, right. Um, so I don't know. It was just a weird tie-in, but <laughs> it, it was. I instantly was like, "Oh, this is in the past." Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, even right, like right. going back to Robert De Niro, his character, the way he dressed and everything, was very you know, eighties. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I think those, I did notice that he was smoking a lot. I thought it was a cool character, um, a little thing that he character does, yeah, like a limp or an eye patch that, to give your character personality, or his like that. dancing, which was really awkward to watch. But that was, I thought that was. Cool. I thought when he I, danced on the stairs at the end, though, it was great. Yeah, it was, I mean, full, you know, Joker, Joker you yeah. know, but just even just the aspect of when he's doing like that slower move, it it felt very much so like like ballet, like yeah, you know, he does. So like felt so it felt very. It, it's interesting. It felt very like uh, vaudevillian, you know, like 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 stage 
like uh like acting and performance and stuff like that like two two things uh a standout scene that even in the trailers I liked was when he's meeting with his uh I guess his social worker mm-hmm. yeah and um and uh he goes you don't listen do you I come here every week right. and mm-hmm. you ask yeah. the same questions and I tell you my day is horrible I lost my job whatever and you ask the same questions over and over you ask if I have negative thoughts and he says all I have is our negative thoughts. I'm like, wow, that's that's really right. Kind of sad, actually. Yeah. Right. But, but wouldn't you expect that from Joker? I I expect that from somebody who's going through a hard time in their lives. In, yeah. In general. So yeah, in general, yeah, or people who are just depressed all the time yes. and can't right. find who struggle to find a silver lining in things. Um, in Joker per se. Not necessarily. I think he laughs at everything because he understands. I think yeah. in terms of comic books, I think Joker understands the joke. Whatever that joke is, mm-hmm. he understands that big, but big question, a big joke that life has. He understands it. And that's why he's able to do what he wants and laugh at everything. But in terms of the movie, I find mm-hmm. that that particular uh, moment, good acting first off, but also telling about the character. Now, on top of that, I think by the end of the movie, you come, I came out thinking, okay, well, what he's saying, what the joke he's saying overall is that one of the things he's saying overall is that, you know, no one's on your side, really. Hmm. Society lets them, the, the, the wealthy lets you down. Um, the government lets you down. Society lets you down. Um, the person who's probably as poor as you lets you down. Your mother lets you down. The media lets you down. Like, in every aspect of his life, your imagination lets you down. Every aspect mm. of your life, has, has failed him. Right. His desires, his dreams let him down as well. His non girlfriend has let him <laughs> down. There is, and he becomes completely isolated until the end of the movie where he's arrested in the back of a cruiser. It crashes and people in clown masks, you know, take him out and start worshiping him practically. Yeah. Whether or not that's at, whether or not that's real or not, or that's in his mind as well, that's, well, I, I think also for discussion just as well. Even, um, thinking about like what do the people in the streets relate to the Joker in like in that moment? You know that inner tension, that dissatisfaction with what they see around them, and and, and like just society in general. I think that's what I, that's what I kind of got that the Joker kind of embodies like that yeah. constant feeling of every person, you know, and just saying, you know, what the joke is like this all kind of sucks in general and everybody else is kind of like rallying around that, you know, like, yeah. like that intense dissatisfaction and stuff like what well, you just look at like any other riot, you know, like it's, it's usually stems from like some sort of intense dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction with some people. sort of situation, not going in the way that they would expect. But here's the thing though. And it's, it's, the Joker kind of stands outside of that. He moves through all that and right. then stands outside of that. Right. Cause I, when he's on the talk show with um, Robert De Niro's character, he says, "Look, I have no political association. Whatever they're doing on side protesting, that's not part of me. I'm he, he's he's already moved beyond that. Right? He said, "Yo, political associations, I don't care. Class systems, I don't care. I'm above all of that because I see the joke. I understand the punchline now, right? And whether whether it's he's the punchline or society's the punchline, one of those two things is the punchline. He gets it now, and so he doesn't care about pol- policy. He doesn't care about anything else at this point. All he cares about is." feeling good i guess yeah well you know what the funny like just even in the movie like did were you guys like um like when it kind of was revealed that like the like joker was going to kill himself on the show i was just like oh i thought it was going i, I thought he was going that direction but then, yeah I was yeah, like, oh, yeah no man. i i did not see him shooting yeah yeah like I'll be honest, with you, I had a hint of that only because I saw an interview with Robert De Niro uh, and he made a comment about how he didn't like what Joker did to him by the end of the movie. I was like, okay, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> but I but I just just even just that setup, like him pr- practicing to be, show up on the show and then like okay, yeah, because you know his knock knock joke thing, right? Yeah, he yeah, kept yeah. making it look like he was gonna shoot himself so, as right. part of the knock knock joke. Yeah, yeah. But even when it didn't happen, like when he did the knock knock joke and it sucked. Yeah. And <laughs> You know, Robert De Niro, like, to your point, had the, like, now is just using his, you know, 
idiocies for fodder yeah for everyone else to laugh at yeah um i still wasn't like i still didn't see it coming right no me and then all of a sudden just boom he still was quite sudden yeah Yeah. even even because like i said i i figured something was going to happen to him i didn't know when though and it happened so quickly i was like oh snap right okay all right all right cool and then again to robert de niro's credit he played dead very well yeah. <laughs> he he held that his head was laid back he held it very convincingly oh god this guy he's a great actor yeah so, <laughs> but how how about you know joaquin phoenix with like the shooting him again and like just the yeah. different yeah, you know, yeah he portrayed this like psychopath yeah very well yeah. right even from like you look at the first scene where he kills those guys yeah you know, the first two right he kills in self defense. defense, right? But the third one, he shoots him, and yeah. he's trying to get away. And yeah. then he shoots him in the back, and then he unloads the gun on him, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And it's just like you, it, even within that scene, you yeah. see the progression That's of his aggression, jo- yeah. like and becoming yeah. the Joker, right? Well, I think it's even more like even in that scene, it's like him exhibiting and showing like the sense of of power even over his own fate. Because before, you know, the first scene, at the beginning, he gets beat up by these guys and he's just taking it. He's just yeah, taking yeah. being beat up by these guys. Yeah. But in that sequence on the train where those three rich guys like pick on him and stuff like that, there's this shift of not wanting to kind of take that oh. that punishment anymore, right? And that's something yeah. we can, people can relate exactly. to. Exactly. You can only you know? so long get beat down before you get back up and punching back. It's only right. so much uh, assault and insult you can take before you start pushing back on people so right it's it's a it's a very not wanting to take the beatdowns anymore it's a very legitimate response right how you respond to it not so much right, right but right. not wanting to take down beat take the beatdowns anymore is it's, yeah i kind of stand wanting to defend yourself and wanting to push back against a society that's kind of trampling trampling on you but well it's i think it's even it's even more than that it's like it's it's also feeling that you're able to control like control things as well yeah too. he he's gaining back control because he's been such a like out of control right. like along for the ride right um, exactly you know especially as you start to hear the backstory with his mother and right and like you know him just being abused and all that stuff that like you know again just adds more layers to his character yeah right, right, right. what do you think about the reveal that he's not who we thought he was um i mean it doesn't surprise me and what I mean by that is, like, you find out his mother is as, you know, on another or or historically was on, yes. you know, another level of delusion. Right. And, and her delusional behavior caused trauma to her kid right. for him to be delusional. And so there's that mm. side of the, you know, abuse, creating an abuser yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. storyline right, right, that, right. that is so we, – we know within society is real. Yeah. Right. And so there, I thought there were so many – you know, different events or components of his life that you could say, oh, I can actually see how this would contribute to, right. maybe not to the extreme that we see it in, yeah, in yeah. Joker, right. but just seeing the negative behaviors developed and caused. Mm. And, and you know, for me, like the whole movie, I was just like such in an analytical state yeah. of like, yeah. how oh, how is he becoming the Joker? How is yeah, he becoming yeah. the Joker, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm, I was in such an appreciation of the character being developed but at the same time, I was also like, "What's taking so long?" Yeah, I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, looking right, back right, on right, it, right. Yeah. I I appreciated how yeah, long it yeah, took. Yeah, because yeah. as soon as he became the Joker, this it ended. Yeah, yeah. Which, again, going to the whole like, you know, Batman universe. I mean, t- I took this as like this is how he ends up in Arkham the first time, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, the mastermind side of him. Hasn't really been developed. Right, right. Yeah, I thought I agree with you on that. I completely yeah. agree with you on that. Like he's still a work in progress by the end of the movie, but you see, like the the the, the psychopathic yeah the aspect side. of it. Yeah, I I think in terms of just as a as a fan of comic books and fiction, whatever, seeing the Joker become a Joker, become the Joker, is exciting to me. It's interesting to me okay. in character study. Like, oh, this is how a person becomes. You know, a super villain. All right, cool. Yeah, um, I think it's just that it hits along that line of like people being interested in like true crime and and stuff like that. It, it, it hits on that, that as well, edge. though. Yeah. It it does that as well. Granted, it's not as sophisticated as as you know those 
though it's more kind of bombastic, a little bit more in right. your face type of thing. But I want to ask a quick question though. Do you think it is it the making of a Joker or the Joker coming to realization that he's a Joker? Do you want to rephrase that? You- no, I, I know what you're. I, I know what you're getting at. Um, the making of a Joker or. Him, or the you realization he's a, joker. He, he's a joker. He's taking off the layers of falsehood to reveal the Joker, or is he putting on something to become the Joker? I I think more so the like he he doesn't. I I don't. I wouldn't say realize because I think there were certain events that had to occur, right? Like in the sense of the violence, right? Yeah. He had to be pushed to the point of, right. and so certain circumstances had to occur for him to commit the heinous crimes. Of you know starting to kill people, and so it like that wasn't it wasn't like he went out to kill someone right, right. like even thinking to the scene where he was getting beaten up and shoots the people yeah. right like that that scene was the catalyst for that component of his character, and without that like he wasn't it wasn't like he put that on as a retaliatory mm-hmm. going back to the first people who beat him up right you know so if it had been more retaliatory as opposed to I don't want to say emotional, but like, you know, in the heat of the moment, then then I would say maybe you're right about, you know, putting on the character as opposed to just developing into it, into okay. the Joker. Hmm. Yeah. I think that it is a movie about um, the main character, Joker, realizing like who he is. It may not be like the murder okay. aspect of it, but him realizing in a sense what like what his sense of like true freedom is. Okay. Cause you guys seem to be taking two different views on this. So let me ask this then. Is there a place where both those views can, can work? For oh, instance, yeah, for sure. can, if we take out some of their early childhood abuse, do you think he would still become, eventually become the Joker that we know? Hmm. And but as you think about that, there is reference to um, the director actually said this as well. You can see it if you've ever read the book, Alan Moore's and um, David Gibbons, the killing joke, yeah, which is pretty much um, a, a pseudo origin story of the Joker, but not really an origin story of the Joker. Cause he has a tendency to kind of lie about his origins or give multiple different origins to himself. So, but in this book, it's pretty much saying one bad day can cause you to lose your mind pretty much. Mm. Right. That's kind of the idea. So in the book, he kidnaps commissioner Gordon makes it the worst day of his life, shoots his daughter, right. kidnaps him, strips him, humiliates him, make, tortures him pretty much in hopes that to prove to Batman that all it takes is one bad day to make another Joker pretty much. So in this movie, do you think it's a case of that one last thing that made him or that revealed who he is? Hmm. Or could you Could you have removed the lies of his mother and would he still become the Joker? Oh, would he come joke later on? Is this a topic for another time? Like what? I don't know. It's like kind of like a nature versus nurture type thing. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a question that like in this particular story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I mean, this is one depiction of how he became the Joker. Joker, Right. So um, which may or may not be true even within the context of the story. I see a lot of, a lot of nurture, you know, (laughs) I see a lot of nurture in, in this, in this movie and stuff like that. But, but also just even, um, but even thinking about like, okay, well, how would he like just the disposition of how he was from the beginning? Would that be the fodder for even just being pushed a little bit to be becoming the Joker in a sense, right? Like we don't see him embracing chaos, you know, at the beginning, but is his like the other side of his, you know, his state, like just being very passive, just is that like a breeding ground to become like that? You know, like, I don't know. That's, it is a nature versus nurture type th- question. Th- throughout the movie, I find this guy, he's a man who, who finds safety in his own world. Mm-hmm. And so he manifests, uh, manifests a, a relationship with a neighbor. He manifests, manifests, uh, um, a career, a, a comedy a career. career, a success, at least a first step in a comedy career. Um, and, and uh, again, like I said, his, his mother has lied to him about who he really is. So he lives in a kind of a, a false reality in a sense. And it's only until he realizes or he steps out of that false reality, we realize, yeah, the world's kind of trash. Even though the world has always showed itself to be kind of trash, at least towards him, mm-hmm. he, he doesn't fully accept it or realize it. And then eventually when the, all the, 
the falseness kind of fades away. He's 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 kind of staring into truth, and that truth seems to kind of pervert him more. So, I I think yeah, there's the aspect of nurture and nature. I think both you guys are right, um, but I think also it's it's just a man who confronted with a horrible truth, and from that point on, it changes him into a way that even he can't handle. So he says, "Bun it! I'm going to go all out and do whatever." it is he wants to do according to his identity, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, and sense? I would say the horrible truth, I would call it different, is his one place of, like, solitude was his mother. You think so? That was the only place? Well, like, if you think, like, before, like, even the letters, like, he's coming home and he's taking care of her. It's a responsibility. Okay, yeah, remember yeah, yeah, remember right. when he pretended to be um, on the show, the first, like, when he was imagining oh, yeah. he was on yes, the show? Yes, yes, yeah. What yeah, did yeah, he yeah. say? I've been a man in my house for... A yes. long time, no, yeah. right? Oh, and yes. so he's yes. had this role and it's responsibility fantasy, yeah. Yeah. that, like, you know, his mom obviously is highly delusional. She probably it seems like she can't leave the house. You know, yeah. Yeah. she's on, I'm sure, a bunch of medication or yeah. something to, you know, he's cutting up her meat. All these things. When he realizes she is off the deep end, she's been lying or doesn't, you know, that I think is the the reality that faces him, where he's like, now he's fully alone and there's like he has nothing left to come back to yeah right which then he turns around and kills his mother yeah that was that was disturbing yeah. um that was a very uncomfortable scene i'm not gonna lie to you that's i, I think it's a problem that's a problem that's the thing about the movie a beautiful part about the movie the multiple layer of themes because loneliness is definitely one you just pointed out delusion identity issues um uh other ones I've th- th- my mind right now, but it's it's multi layer. I think this is probably one of the most. I think it's a very clever movie, mm-hmm. and the things aren't necessarily hidden. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not they're not trying to hide things. It's not deep in the sense of intertwined ideologies and and, and theories mm-hmm. in it. Like to dig deep to get it, but they're, they're closer to the surface than not. Yeah, like if you spend, if you pay attention, if you're it's going on the yeah, it yeah. builds up. You can pay attention. You can see the things that are are there. It's not like you're watching, I don't know, Inception or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, which <laughs> is, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think I think oh. it's it's a well done movie, and I think it's it's something that Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor from day one. Yeah, first off, Robert De Niro is a great actor from day one, but doesn't always act great. Um, but he did well in this movie. And Todd Phillips, I didn't really see the Hangover movies. I've seen parts of them. I didn't, I never watched them wholly. Not my thing. But for him to move from there to this and make it as well as he did, I think is, it's a good achievement for him. It's, it's commendable. Like it definitely is a good character. It is a definitely good character piece in general. Um, and it, I think it's primarily a character piece in general. Like I don't, there's not really much of a, direction or plot to the movie <laughs> in general. It's about a man who's trying to survive society. How does he do that? Like, like by killing getting, society. By, by, okay, well, that's, I don't think there's not much of a necessarily a plot. There's a lot of occurrences that happen to him. But, um, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, a lot of circumstance. But, um, uh, what did you guys think about uh, the, the Bruce Wayne scene? There's two. There's two Bruce Wayne scenes. I wanted to say, well, the first one was weird, but I would say that this movie works as a double origin story: the origin <laughs> of the Joker and the origin of Bruce Wayne. So I, I, I liked how they snuck it in at the end. Yeah, I, I, I you know what? Traditionally, I would have been annoyed, like, oh, I'm trying to, but it actually worked. It worked well. It did. Yeah. I thought it worked. Yeah, yeah. I think it worked. You didn't like? Go ahead. It, no, it was. It was like. I mean, it was also the whole thing about how you said you didn't really like Bruce or um, Thomas Thomas Wayne was a jerk. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so they built up to like yeah, I, yeah. it was a different reason why he was killed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To some extent than the norm. And yes. Right. In that yeah. Sense, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. But it fit within the the whole story. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, think, yo, that I, I think, yes, I think in that aspect, they fit it in well. I think it would have been more disturbing if they just had the first scene with him. You know, making the smile on on Bruce's mouth. I thought that was like, yeah, that was just, that was weird. That was freaky. That was invasive. And, I don't know. No, but I thought but I thought was, it fit his character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, was invasive, it was, but it fit just very weird. Yeah. <laughs> but he's also thinking this is his little brother. Yes, that's, that's true. Now, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's, that's a very good point, actually. You know, it's funny. This movie had a lot of weird and awkward things that 
in any other movie, I think that's why they do that stupid. Mm-hmm. It actually works here. Even if things that doesn't make any sense to me, really. One or two things that didn't make sense to me, why he did that, is like, eh, it makes sense in terms of his character. This is something he probably would do in, in, in his downward, uh, downward uh, spiral. Yeah. Did you guys think that they were actually going to tie them as brothers? No, actually, I didn't, you know, I, I, stepped, I stayed away from a lot of stuff. No, no, I meant like but, while but, you were watching oh, it. Oh. Like, because they revealed it as if it was true. Yeah. I was, was, you know what? I, I, I was like, was like <gasps> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Different take. Okay, cool. So I kind of thought maybe they were going to go in a different direction with that. It's okay, fine. A different iteration. Yeah, I was, I, at first I was like, can they do that? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, is that allowed? <laughs> but when they kind of switched it up again, it's like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Right, so I would have been okay if they did that. I, I would be okay with it. Arthur Wayne. Yeah. I, I remember while it was, I was going to come here and be like, is this not like, you know, blasphemy? <laughs> like, <laughs> while it was like, as I was taking it in, I was like, we're going to talk about this. And I'm going to be like, well, tell me this is not so wrong. But, but then obviously, made, like, they blew Kate it up. and Abel, you know, like, yeah, you know, yeah. they could have played up that. That would have been cool too. Yeah. I think if they were playing a, a part two to the movie, they can't um, make part two to this movie. It, well, there have been no, discussions no, 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 about no. it. There have been discussions about they it. They cannot do a part they, two it, to the movie. But hold, hold on, but let me finish the point for it. I want to ask you about that still. Um, if they did do a part two, hypothetically, yeah. it would have been it would have to take like years. After oh yeah, it'd be like when Batman, is yeah, he's, Batman, and then he right. realizes the Joker is his brother, and then that would be an interesting kind of even philosophical type of debate between yeah. the both of them. But would you want a part two to this movie? Could you see a part two, of Joker two? No, I, it would have to be like. 15 years later, like the, you know what I mean? Like, I would still think it has to be, you know, him getting out of Arkham okay. under the pretense that he's better and his mental illness is resolved. And, mm. and then that's where the mastermind side of Joe, like, so mm. if it did, otherwise it's just a money grab to me. Like in the sense of like, you're, you're just trying to milk the fact that it was, you know, that that's he good. played a really good version of yeah. um, Joker. Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I don't think they can. Why not? Because because it's a character because it's solely a character piece. They yeah. have nowhere to go. Talk about they, they can go anywhere. The, they, just, they have nowhere to go. Get a good writer. You can go no, anywhere no, you they, want. They okay. They have could to go. could could they have him in a future Batman movie? Yes, they could have him in a future Batman movie. Okay. They did say I heard I saw reports. That, that I can see. The okay. saw, saw reports. That's that, more what I meant yeah, when yeah, I said yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. part two. Yeah. Of, of like the current universe that they they're trying to set up for DC. You mean? I or mean, just their own. Well, I mean. I, I, I mean, you could have a in in a restart, whatever, okay. yeah. right? But he'd be so old, though. I know. That's the that, thing. That's, Batman that's, would be like twenty, time, and Joker would be like what, his mid forties. But then again, it doesn't really matter because as long as he he's in the mind, makeup and hair and yeah, he's not fighting. Yeah. So right. yeah, it could work. Sure. As long as he's not wrinkly and gray, it's gonna hey, be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know if I want to see part two. I'm content with part one. Um. If they show me a script for part two and it's good, great. If not, great. Uh, what I would want to see in a part two, I don't know. Yeah, I really, I really don't know what I would want to see. But I mean, I'd want it would be like telling the Riddler story with him in it. No, I don't want to see that. No, but I just meant like to me again, similar to the idea of like I don't like you kind of said I don't know where you can take it. You can't. There's nowhere you can right take like, it. and that's where the only place I think you can take it is to make him a supplemental character as opposed to a main character. New movie Riddler. <laughs> uh, there's a I, I I don't I don't know about this that. man I, who's just really depressed and all he could do was solve riddles. Actually, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, a Mister Freeze movie. Yeah, that that would be pretty I cool. But you know face. what? Or Bane. That'd be cool. Well, Batman the animated series already did it better. So, Yo, I, that, yeah, that episode I, was I don't great. think I don't think we can really touch that ever again. Have you seen Batman animated series? No, dude, yeah. you got to watch it. Yeah, no, no, seriously, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a solid. Eighty nine to what ninety four, ninety five. It was yeah. great. Um, we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, so final thoughts: Joker, like, dislike, any other ideas or anything from the movie that you guys got that you want to share? I mean, I think when it comes to like recommending it, it would, ha- you know, if you want to, if you know who Joker is and you're wanting to see a story about how he got there, you're, you're, you're not going to be surprised by any of the like, you know, let's say blunt violence 
Yeah. Um, but if you're going to see, hey, this might be a good movie. I'm not really into Batman. It's pr- you're probably not going to like it. Yeah, yeah. Do you need to be? Do you, Do you need to know who the Joker is? Gotham, Batman, and this stuff in order to go enjoy it and watch it. Yes. I, I don't know that you have to, but you at least have to know what you're getting into. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because like, you know, if you if you're thinking it's just a interesting character story without understanding the like superhero. Well, yeah, world. but but also like the ty- like the character the Joker is. Okay. Like some of the progression doesn't make sense if you don't already know the final. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is cuz why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you rather watch like a true crime movie, like Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, why? Yeah, why would you watch Silence of the Lambs versus this? Mm. Why? Why wouldn't you? So this seems to appeal more to Batman comic book fans oh, yeah, than def- than not. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I think that I think that's the whole the whole premise even behind it. You know, mm. it's a it's a spinoff off of the Batman franchise. Or right? final question. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. I said something else. Sorry. Final question. Then do you do you see more? Uh, standalone villain movies in the future. And if so, who you want to see? I hope not. Okay, hope not. So that's our. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. You know, I think of like Catwoman or stuff like that. That's just like <laughs> failed miserably, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, she's sort of a villain. Um, yeah, it's but, true. It's but, the classic anti-hero. Well, and and my point is like, you don't really have a character like the Joker that you can really pull back a whole bunch of layers to right. the way this actually told a story. Mm. Right? So, I mean, you, you made the comment about Bane. Clocking. Okay, maybe, you know, but but like, it's I think it's too quick of a story mm. almost. A Bane? The Bane story. Like, in, in, in the sense of not having enough I tension I see throughout right. the story. Yeah, right? It's kind of right. like a catalytic event. Yeah. Right. Um, uh. Whereas the Joker's character fully you know, develops. That's the, well, the reason I actually said the Riddler is because in Gotham, he actually took a long time yeah. to yeah, become yeah, yeah. the Riddler. Yeah. Okay. And so there was actual nice. character development that, that you saw progress. So, okay. you All know, right. that's where like, do I think they could do as good of a job with Riddler? Not really because, you know, the whole like, it's, it's a, t- it's a lot, I think it would be a much longer time horizon with the schizophrenic side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that would be a lot tougher. Whereas, you know, the Joker, I thought it was well done in terms of the short series of time right. that this transpired from being a guy who dressed like a clown to a guy who is a clown, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I take it back. I can't see a Riddler movie. However, I think it would be too similar to a Joker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, you have to do it like 10 years from now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, I, like like I said before, I'm not a fan of necessarily like villain movies per se, but um, I think this movie is just well acted. Is is a like it's Incredibly a very well strong, yeah. very strong character piece examining a character. I don't think you can really go much further than that, you know, with it. And that's not a bad thing. Great acting, good character piece. The world that they they set up and how they get there, and maybe some subtext things they're maybe saying about the world that may not necessarily be on board about but um but in terms of just examining the character is is good okay yeah yeah all right so i guess that's our episode for today thanks again for joining in uh joel thanks for joining us uh from the success report yeah check us out six sense report Yo, what's your twitter man six sense report what's your- <laughs> facebook <laughs> six sense yeah. report okay everything <laughs> is six sense report, report. Oh, drop yeah. drop the the Six Sense Report. Six report. Perfect. Gmail, Six Sense Report at Gmail. Please make sure to check out the Six Sense Report. Let's listen to them, share them. They have insightful and deep and interesting and fun things to talk about uh, in within the context of Canadian politics, religion, society. Yeah. I mean, for I think for both of us, the biggest thing is bringing the concept of economics to conversations yeah. because, mm. um, you know, I think there's a, there's a quote, and again, I'm going to butcher it, but the idea of like, Economics is a dismal science. Mm -hmm. And then you've got politicians who talk about it, like they actually know what they're talking about and they have no economic understanding. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and so for the, I would say for the large 
population. Economics is something they're largely ignorant of, mm. but it's really not that complicated. Mm. Um, it's it's a relatively anal- good analytical tool to think about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's our goal with that, you know, with what we do at the Six Sense Report. Um, but, I mean, I'm just a nerd and I like to talk. Yo, we're all nerds here. It's all right. All right. Well, you can reach us here at uh, on Twitter at at after un- at after underscore watch. Wow, that took a little bit of first time. time? Yeah, first time. <laughs> first time saying it. Uh, reach us on Twitter, right? And, or you can email us at theafterwatch at pm dot e m e. You can hear us on all your podcast purveyors. You know your Castbox, your Apple Podcasts, your Anchors, your you know your Google Plays, all pod, of those. Podcasts. Podbean, thanks to me. And, and yes, thank you. As well too. And actually, Anchor because of you as well. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Yes. And we're also on Spotify. All right. Well, <laughs> take care, everyone. <laughs>